Welcome to Speakers TV. I'm really excited to be speaking to you today. Uh, shall we introduce ourselves? Let's go from Sajda. Hi, I'm Sajda. I'm one of the co-directors for Peaceophobia. Hi, I'm Aria. I'm a co-director for Peaceophobia as well. Hi, I'm Rosma, and I'm a co-director of Peaceophobia as well. Hi, I'm Iram, and I'm also um, a co-director of Peaceophobia. Hi, I'm Madi, and I'm also a co-director of Peaceophobia. Hi, I'm Maliha, and I'm a co-director of Peaceophobia as well. It's so great to speak to you all today. Um, we'll be talking about Peaceophobia, which you're all very, very closely involved in. Um, my first question is going to be to Madia. What sparked Peaceophobia? Um, so speakers con actually did a car rally with Bradford Modified Club in City Park and they brought the cars down and it was a bit of like a show and tell. So they were all showing the cars and, and there was quite a large number of people who came to look and they just wanted to show how cars excite them and they were really beautiful cars and some of them were really passionate about it because they felt a lot of people looking in from the outside thought that they achieved them cars through illegal manners. So that's one thing that they really wanted to show during the car rally that this is their passion and they actually have, this is their job and they're not doing anything wrong and they're doing something right. And after the car rally, we met up as the girls of Speakers Corner and we were like, that was actually a really important thing that we should take from there. We should do something about this. And, and it also linked with Islamophobia because these boys were getting hit just because they were driving such a fancy car, but they're not doing anything wrong. They're driving, they've done their road tax, they've done everything else. Why are they getting so much hate for it? And um, so, yeah, piece of phobia got sparked from there. It was just such an exciting place to be at the time and just to see them so passionately talk about the cars and the play is about some young boys who are discussing about their cars. Thank you. And um, Maliha, tell me, what was it that got you involved in this? So peace phobia is something that's quite very important to me because I resonated a lot with what uh, message peace phobia kind of put out there because I have older brothers myself who have been the victim of these kind of judgment and it really was important to me to for me to really get the message out there for young for boys like my brothers and for all the many young boys out there in Bradford that feel like they're judged as well so when peace phobia <clears throat> first started and when i found out there was going to be turning to a play i really was i really was keen to be involved and play as big, a bigger part as in, in it as possible and anything uh, if there was anything i could do to help get the message out there i wanted to be involved in it so i just i just kept coming to meetings about it and i um i ended up becoming just the co-director of it because it was something that i was extremely extremely passionate about Thank you. Um, Maria, tell us uh, more about the aims. So what was it that you aimed to do at the beginning? Have they changed? Uh, and what do you hope to do with the play? Um, for us, I think what was important, the aims for Peaceophobia was, it was talking, we have three young Muslim men from Bradford and there's a certain stereotype that just goes with that. And it's about showing this other side and saying that they might be young Muslim men and they might have this fast car but they have put their time and energy into this and it's not like a big flashy car necessarily it is just like a standard car but the engine is done up they've got a sound system in the back and they've built that so there's really like a talent uh, that goes into it and the way they speak about these cars it's an art as well and we wanted to show that side and even just i think on this level it was just about saying to these young muslim men that this is your story you're sharing your narrative we're not bringing in other people the script is their words in rehearsals if they were like we wouldn't say this or we don't agree with this it was scrapped it was changed there was no second guessing about it because for us it was so important that it was truth that they were telling because they've had experiences in the past where someone's come in interviewed them and then edited edited it and it's gone in the opposite direction it's not what the message was saying so for us knowing they've had that bad experience, it was so important that they trust us to tell their story. And again, like throughout the play, there's, um, we talk about Islam, Islamophobia, car culture. And again, those are so important topics as well because they're part of their lives. And like naturally in the, um, in the show, the boys talk about like Islam and how it affects them in their day-to-day -day life. One of the actors talks about praying Idol Gursi, which is like, um, a verse from the holy book that's just about protection something that you're taught from a young age and 
it, he just talks about it so normally like this is what I do and it's just like a normal thing it's not something that's like big to him but even him just sharing that on a stage you just don't see this and I think for us as well an aim was representation because you never see three young Muslim men you never see three Asian men on a big stage like this sharing their story I mean this show is going to tour we're hoping it'll go to London for it to go to London and people coming and seeing them on stage and them just going this is us and this is what it is it's just as simple as that and that's where that's why as well it's so important that's so fantastic and you you talked and 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 also Madia and Maliha as well um about stereotypes and I wanted to ask Rosma what stereotypes were were they that you were trying to challenge with with this production yeah um so I think at the beginning, so we it's about the car, so we'll start off with the cars. So a lot of young Asian men that have really nice cars always get this like stereotype of they're drug dealers. Mm. Where did the money come from to have these cars? Mm. They're burning their money onto their cars. They're disrespectful. They don't follow the law. It was, and they're often treated like they're criminals without actually knowing the boys or the men, what they are, who they, what they do their personalities without actually getting to know these guys people judge them judge instantly you're a bad person because you drive a nice car that makes some noise and it's getting stopped by the police and it's how what the, how the police see the cars and the guys but don't actually see truly who these guys are like you see you look at me you see okay he's brown he's got a beard and he drives a nice car there's something wrong there mm-hmm. and then you've got the second like stereotype of young Muslim men that look a certain way, again, beards that might wear a hat, who sometimes wear um, a thorb and you know, look like they're on the way to a mosque or just want to express their faith through their, their clothing. And instantly they're judged. Why do you have to wear that for? Are you on your way of becoming a terrorist? It's, it constantly happens. We've all got males in our families who have judged, gone through this, gone through at school, gone through on the streets, walking the streets and the police deciding to stop you because of what you're wearing it's a, in itself is a major, major stereotype that needs to change. The police have, have been taught this mentality and it will carry on being taught unless we start challenging it and saying, actually, get to know who these boys are. And one of the, the key things in, in the play as well that I, that I noticed was uh, one of the characters says that wearing a white thobe is like instigation. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like just you existing, like it's almost like, in, like you're inviting an attack onto yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, oh, it's, it's truly, truly, truly awful. And I think it's, everyone focuses on women and women, Muslim women and oppression of Muslim women and those that wear the headscarf and those that don't wear the headscarf and wanting to understand Muslim women but and then automatically assume the men are oppressing the women and they never ever want to sit down and have a conversation with these men about who they are and how do they practice their faith and you know their relationship with their women in their family and and I think that comes through quite strongly in the um, play as well and that was really important and I think a lot of people like to say why where are the women the women are here <laughs> we're, we're behind the play and we want you to actually for once listen to these men and find out who they are and stop looking at them based on their appearances and their vehicles yeah definitely and uh, sajda as well i wanted to to ask you you've uh throughout, throughout this play the, the one of the strongest themes is you know that it takes place in a car a, a car rally you know takes place and it's strongly about the the connection between these men and, and their cars why was it important to include that well firstly because it's originated in bradford we're known for our cars like if you look in the media we get a negative um like coverage for it but we're known for our cars like you know you go around and like if you go to your local Aldi car park you'll see a car meet happening on a Sunday on a really nice like a Sunday afternoon and like we're known for our cars and you hear every like an hour or so you can if you count how many cars you hear going past in like these big boisterous engines like you know it's you know you're in Bradford um so for us being true to that and not kind of going away and shying away from the point that it's about cars and also using cars as a way to get other people to come and see the show or talk to us because obviously if we talk and say we're going to educate you on Islamophobia that might not be something someone is comfortable to come and talk to someone about or be able to have the confidence and say I want to learn more about it but the car we're using it as something that we're going to attract a different audience to um, a car 
kind of audience and someone who is just like oh, okay this is my kind of way into the theater world and starting a conversation and we use this pretty object to kind of come make you come in and then we talk to you about hey listen to these guys and it's not just this pretty car you're looking at it's what's inside it like they've put in, they've put in effort but you're hearing them talk about what it is to be who they are and what they hear and I think like in the play as well they talk a lot about this the the physical act of putting a car together and what it is to put each part together but then they talk about how it affects them and how as a, a male you know a brown muslim man like what it is to, to be that as well so we construct it and we deconstruct it as well for you but yeah the whole point of talking about cars is so that we are true to bradford and we also want to celebrate our car car culture a bit because it is quite like a big thing that we're teamed up with Bradford Modified Car Club so we want to celebrate that and we want to like be prideful about the fact that yeah we're a city about cars and we're quite proud of it and we're showing you what the other side of it is and it's not always illegitimate drug money it's actually people working hard for their for their like hobby and there's something that they're actually good at. So it's like you you want to kind of like dismantle those stereotypes but also put forward what what is a truthful and like really positive idea of what car culture in Bradford is is about um which which yeah which is something that I, I think is is definitely going to be be achieved um and I, w I wanted to pick up on and this is open to, to all of you but in particular I want to ask Iram about your experiences of Islamophobia and you know what what is it what what are the, these instances of Islamophobia that, that run so uh, frequently throughout the play is this something that's informed on the lives of you, the lives of your brothers, your uncles, um, the people around you? Yeah, so um, we did want to project the reality um, around Islamophobia and how it actually occurs because a lot of a lot of people have have this misjudgment of how Islamophobia is such it's 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 everywhere there's institutional um racism occurring in so many different institutions but also it's so common now that people don't realize that it's actually happening um and i think through the characters so in the play um casper sahil ali we have we have got a few hints of that um and that also comes from our personal experiences um i'm a muslim woman myself um and i wear the headscarf now i started wearing the headscarf at a point in my life where i wanted to so it was something that i chose to do no one forced it upon me um i actually remember having a conversation with my dad at the time and he he looked at me and he said um i know you really want to do this but you've got to think carefully because of the area you live in and um the judgment that you're going to come across because he's never been the type to force anything upon me but i sat him down and i said look i know you're you're trying to be this this person who's trying to help me through this through life really but I, I do want to do this and I do want to wear it because n it's not only a symbol for me of my religion, but it's modesty for me. And modesty comes in so many different forms. You don't need, uh, need to wear a headscarf to be modest. It's all about your mindset as well. So from, from these principles that I have myself, um, I wanted to implant this in the play and I think we all wanted to implant this um, and when it came to the planning stages, so the early planning stages of pisophobia, we, because it's not all about women and because it's about the men, um, it was it was difficult at first because it's like you have to think logically and you have to think right this isn't from a woman's perspective you have to like sit back a little bit and think right how would a man think and what do, what does a man have what does a young muslim asian male go through every single day and that's where we got the stories from um the, the lads and um a few of i don't want to like um spoil it but there are a few personal stories in there that and experiences that they've been through so that's what we've kind of implanted in into pisophobia itself. And um, and I wanted to ask as well, um, how has Islamophobia impacted you personally um, in, in your life? What kind of impact does it have on, on the different areas of, of your life? Um, I think at this age now, I've got to an age where I, I kind of brush it off. Um, it's bad. It does sound bad. It, it, it sounds bad, but sometimes you just get used to the fact that not everyone's going to accept you as you are so you have to adjust to it but that does not mean that it's right 
Um, and that's that's the thing that we're trying to break, the stereotype we're trying to break is that it shouldn't be a norm. Um, a young Muslim woman should be able to dress how she wants to dress. She should be able to wear a headscarf. She should be able to go onto a train. And, and you've asked me about a personal, um, a personal event. Um, I think I was I was on a train to, where was I? A, a uni interview to, uh, was it Middlesex or? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Middlesex. Sorry, I, I don't really know which um, interview it was, but at that time I was traveling to Middlesex and I was alone and I was sat on the train. And as you do, like I was half tired. I had two hours of sleep. Um, I was stressing about my interview, whether I was going to like do, I, I, despite the fact I didn't want to go to that uni, I just wanted to go there for the experience of um, doing an interview. Um, and I was just in my own world and, and there was a woman sat across me and I kid you not, she was the nicest woman I've actually met. Um, but um, uh, at that moment in time, I was getting looks by um, a guy that was sat opposite me. Um, and this was a personal experience. So he, he just kept looking at me and he, he then came and he approached me and he said, why don't you take the thing that's on your head off? Um, and I was, uh, first of all, I, I, I couldn't believe he had actually said that because I just looked at him for a second. I was like, calm down, do not, <laughs> do not, get, like you need to calm down. You're on a, you're on a public train. Um, you've got to be somewhere and um, you're going to get there in an hour's time and the lady across me actually sat me down and she said she first of all told him off because at that moment in time I was shocked myself um, and then I spoke to him and I sat him down and I go if you want to say something to me you can say it to me but don't say it in that tone and if you have a personal opinion keep it to yourself if it's going to be damaging to another person um, and then after that conversation we had, he, because he had nowhere, he couldn't escape really. And that's the only reason why he sat with me and he talked to me. Otherwise, I don't think it would have happened. But that personal experience of mine kind of woke, woke me up because we live in Bradford. Um, racism does exist. It exists everywhere. In Bradford especially, that there, there have been occurrences where I have faced racism myself. Um, but... I feel like because we live in a city that's quite diverse as well, um, people are more accepting of our culture. Um, but when you go out to different cities and you have experiences that can that make you stop and think, right, what you're doing is actually different and wearing a headscarf isn't normal in a lot of cities and you're representing a religion, but you're, you're doing it in a positive way. So there's nothing to be ashamed of. And that's the main thing we wanted to display through Peaceophobia. Being Muslim is something you should be proud of. And no one should ever be ashamed of being able to express themselves, uh, express themselves and also represent something that they truly believe in. Thank you. And th I, I can tell from all the nods that it's resonating so much with, it, with everyone <laughs> uh, yeah, else. Yeah, so like five nods. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so does anyone else want to share anything, any experiences they've had or maybe a little bit about like the impact? You don't have to share an experience, but it can be the impact that it has on you as, as a young person. Um, um, yeah, so I have, I think, two experiences that have stuck with me since forever. And I do agree, I think, in, in Bradford, you, you cocooned a little bit. And... I left to go to university in London and my first year of university my cousin came to visit me actually and she wore a headscarf and I didn't and I always say you know London's the most tolerant and intolerant place like most places and um, when she came we went out you know had a really lovely time and she decided one day she wanted to take a headscarf off because she was getting certain looks and certain comments. So she goes, I just, I just want to take it off. I went, okay. I goes, if that's what you're going to do, just you, you do you. And then when she was leaving to come home, she goes, I'm going to put it back on now. And we got to the, the train station and um, there was a football match going on. And instantly, they were all really drunk, football hooligans. And um, I said to her, I go, are you sure you want to put your scarf back on? Because I don't think it's safe. And she goes, no, 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 it'll be fine. You know, we're going home. Like, I'm going home. I go, you're going to be by yourself. It's the first time you've ever done this. I really don't think you should put your scarf back on. I think, you know, put a hood on. Put, just find somewhere to cover your head. Just don't make it obvious. And she went, no, 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 I'm going to be fine. So she gets to go on the train. And I see um, just two British transport police officers. I go up to them and I go, look, my cousin's just gone onto a train full of football. Hooligans is what I'm going to call them because they're all drunk. They're off their heads and they're already shouting abuse at each other. She wears a headscarf and I don't feel safe with her on the train. They brushed yeah, my concern off and said she'll be fine. Like, this is just a stupid concern. Um, 
she gets so on the train, she gets to about Doncaster and she's sorting a scarf out and she's like making sure it's like right and stuff. And um, there was these two guys and two women and there was sat, she was on a two seater and there was the two guys were sat behind her and the two women were kind of sat there and they started making comments. They started off with the comments and then the women started laughing and then the guy behind her started playing with her head. And then, um, so she stays really, really calm, really composed. And then she, um, they get up to get off the train and they yanked her scarf off. And um, she didn't, and the girls are laughing, the other guy's laughing and it's like, she stayed really composed, really composed. And then she got to about Leeds and her mum came to pick her up and uh, she got into the car and she burst into tears. And then her mum, her mum didn't know what happened. So her mum rang me and I went, what do you mean she's crying? I went, what's happened? And I went, give her the phone. So she gives her the phone. I went, like, stop crying. Tell me what's happened. And she told me and I just I didn't know what to say to her. Yeah. And it's like, she was by herself, 18, on a train back home. And that yeah. horrendous, horrendous incident. Your scarf doesn't offend. What is what what is it about the fast like headscarf? Do they find offensive? Yeah. You're living your life, and I think that really stuck with me because then after that, anytime I travelled, anything, anytime she came, I made sure I came with her on the train and I went back with her on the train. Never said to her, "Come by yourself ever again." Yeah. I just I didn't want to risk it. Not after that. I think as much as we try to act brave as Muslim women and Muslim men, we always have that fear instilled in us. Like, I know quite a few times when I'm finishing from uni and I'm getting the bus down, uh, is it safe to actually go down this road to go to the bus stop? Like, why shouldn't it be safe? Why do I have to second guess when I'm walking just because I've got something on my head? And I'm the one who's got the pain of carrying this on my head <laughs> in the heat. Why do you have a problem with it? Like, mate, leave me alone. Like, exactly, but it's... It's that fear that, unfortunately, like Malia said, we shouldn't have. But as Muslim men and women, we do have, and we have to carry it every single day on our shoulders. Like, Iram shouldn't have had to go through that. She was going to a, like, a really special place for an interview. Why does she have to go through that way before it? It's just, like Malia said, it's that thing that no one else will understand apart from us. As much as they try to understand, because we do have quite a few people who are willing and wanting to understand, but they'll never understand it as much as we do, because... Like, you might not wear a headscarf, but you've still gone through it. I wear a headscarf and I've gone through it, but it's, we're both Muslim. They're not Muslim, so they won't. Yeah. But it's, this is why peace phobia is so important, because we're sharing the stories, we're sharing the problems that we go through, and we're not doing it in a nagging way. We're not doing it like, oh, sit here, we're telling you about Islamophobia. Sit here, we're telling you about car culture and why you shouldn't judge us. But we're doing it inter in an interactive way, using car culture, as a positive message to try and incite other people to come. And I think that was another one of our main messages, just to promote it and to bring happiness and just love and just show them that we are Muslims, we are just normal, just like you. We just do things a bit differently, <laughs> literally. This is like a, a, a way of driving change. What you're doing, you know, being co-directors of, of a play at this young age is absolutely incredible, I think. Um, and all props to all of you for all of your like incredible hard work and also taking like those experiences like that are intensely negative intensely like th like traumatic in, in a lot of like circumstances but you're channeling into something that's really good and you know you're hoping for that to change more than just like your environment here more than Speakers Corner more than Bradford even you know across the across the UK and across the world um, so I just wanted to say what was your favorite part of of, of all of this uh, of, of the entire piece of phobia journey um, and you're all welcome to answer that I think the rehearsal so far <laughs> yeah. it's like when we I think getting the boys into a room and you know listening to them just saying to them what do you what do you what story do you want to push portray what 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 do you want people to know and then all of us I think Evie said the same things like what 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 do you want people to leave the play f feeling and it was really just lovely for us to sit there and have these conversations because I think for so long we keep all of this bottled up mm -hmm. you can tell from just now like just talking to each other we keep everything bottled up but we didn't in these rehearsals we talked and it was amazing yeah. I think for me it's like 
the big thing is what everyone said i agree with you but also being south asian and being in a room and being creative i think that for me was like a big thing because the writer was south asian you know he was muslim we had a connection on that the co-directors were south asian the actors were actors were south, south asian and having the opportunity to take over or like have control over your narrative and be able to sit in a room and connect and be on that level i think for me that was a big thing because you don't really get that in this kind of artsy kind of world it is like there is a hierarchy but here it felt like we were all family we were all you know we had really like emotional moments but we also had really funny moments and it was it's so far to the rehearsal stage i love it i don't know i might hate it when we get to the, we get to the show but yeah love it i mean same i mean i love the rehearsals <laughs> but there were like little moments i remember it was just like during lunch and you'd just be sat and we were all in one room and you just i think like every day you're so busy you go to work you do this you do that but we had time to just sit and talk to each other and just like Sajda was saying having like a room full of brown people it was just like so refreshing and hearing their stories and just like learning about them as people and just having like these normal conversations that we wouldn't be able to have otherwise because you know like I would never really work with you otherwise or we just wouldn't stop and chat and there was just somewhat really beautiful in that and I think it does show in the play as well because they're real life stories and it is like you see the brotherhood in them i mean throughout the play they're just picking on each other and just taking the make out of each other and that's how they are as people and i think we got and they did the same to us in rehearsals <laughs> but it was just that like it was kind of like family vibes it was like we laughed loads it was really emotional it got really intense at times but that's the beauty in it as well yeah. i think one of uh, from like an external perspective one of the best things about this was um, like usually when you have um, uh, campaigns or projects that um, usually like will involve or be about Muslim women, it's normally like um, or, or Muslim women or you know any anything specific, it normally kind of stays there. But what you've done is open it out, mm -hmm. and you've included you know young Asian Muslim men at a time when you know there there's so much pressure, there's so many challenges, there are so many stereotypes. And you've kind of stated it just in 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 the existence of this that that like when you speak f on behalf of yourself, when you speak on behalf of your community, it's for everyone. Yeah. Um, it's for like the liberation of everyone. It's so that everyone can be free, everyone can live their lives, and it's not just about you know one small group, for example. It's it's everyone. And I think that that's what comes through so perfectly for me. I think that's the best <laughs> aspect of it from like an external perspective because you know I'll put my my two pence in as well. But it's just amazing because you know that you've you've um, you've created space, but you've widened that space out to include other people, um, and that's for, for me. I think that's the best thing that that you can do. Um, and I, and my final question is kind of where do you want to see this this going? What's the future? What is the future for Peaceophobia? I think. Um, obviously, we mentioned we're touring, so Manchester, London. Um, but I feel like the, there are going to be a, a lot more events under the name Peaceophobia. Um, but I think, I think because the Peaceophobia play itself came about after the event we had beforehand, and that excitement, we buzz over it, the excitement. So we'll come up with something new. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. The future will tell. Like we'll we'll see how how things go. But I I really do think it's having an impact on people and it's opening people's eyes. So hopefully we can we can do bigger and better and just maybe tell the world. That's a big, that's watch a big this, statement. Watch, watch this space. Watch, watch this space. space.